There it is. Should be fixed. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> testing one, two. Testing one, two. Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. We are five by five. Yeah, I made some adjustments uh, to positioning, and then I must have hit the uh, the button there. So thank you. See, this is why I need you guys. Yeah, you, you know, we need one another. Otherwise, we make mistakes. So thank you for helping me out there. Appreciate it. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time, uh, we just always like to encourage everyone that uh, one of the things that we like to do around here is we like to go over these headlines. We can't completely disconnect. I know a lot of you have. Uh, have had that attitude, and uh, I've heard that a few times over the years where people say, hey, I've just completely disconnected from that news. I don't listen to any of that stuff anymore, and I can I can understand that, but at the same time, uh, we are commanded to watch. We are commanded to be not Sarim, right, to watch his word and to watch the things that are coming to pass so that we as children of light are not caught unawares. And so we do these once a week uh, so that as we like to say around here, we can be informed without being overwhelmed. And being overwhelmed is not a good thing because, of course, what happens is you uh, you make bad decisions when you are in fear or uh, when they can get you into that uh, state of anxiety. Uh, those are not your best decisions. I think you can look back and see that in your lifetime, anytime that you've made decisions under any kind of stress, uh, it's not been good. So. It's better to be informed ahead of time, to have time to think about things beforehand, see them coming afar off, and as the scripture says, hide yourself, right? So a wise man sees trouble afar off and hideth himself or conceals himself away from those things. And that's the power of the prophetic. That's the power of getting ahead of these things. And we have a website that we uh, put together for all the news items that we cover in all of our weekly updates and at remnantwatch.com. That's remnantwatch.com. You're going to find everything that we've already discussed and the headlines that we're going to be talking about tonight. So bookmark that site and it should be helpful to you. You'll not have any pop-ups or things for sale or other distractions. Uh, we simply just don't do that. Uh, this is a labor of love and we thank all of the members of Remnant House who make this broadcast possible. We're always grateful to every one of you. And again, thank you for joining us here on the chat. I can see quite a few of you that are already starting to file in, and it's always a, a wonderful thing when we have our brethren together. And on that note, let's get into the news. And there's been several stories that have really been uh, interesting and in many ways foreboding the things that are coming. And so we need to be a people that are awake to the things that are happening. And this tops our story. U.S. Intel has just sounded the alarm over North Korea's use of chemical weapons. So that's important because this is a country that has already openly threatened the United States. And uh, so if they're, um, you know, un unabashedly preparing to use chemical weapons, uh, that's going to affect a lot of people. So this is something that we can't ignore. A new U.S. intelligence report published on Monday raised alarms about North Korea's deployment of chemical weapons, among other threats poised, posed by the Hermit Kingdom. The report, an annual worldwide threat assessment from the U.S. intelligence community, was compiled by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. And uh, I'm not so sure we can completely trust national intelligence, but nevertheless, this is what they're reporting. In it were discussed the recent actions and movements of nations antagonistic to the U.S., such, such as China and Russia, and we're going to talk about them here in a minute, and the state of certain classifications of attack, including nuclear strikes and cyber attacks, which we already warned uh, we should see more of, and, and though they may try to blame these things on Oh, I don't know. Solar flares. The next one will be the eclipse. Oh, my goodness. They're closing schools because of the eclipse. Never heard of such a thing before, but uh, it seems as om almost as if it's going to be used as some form of cover. So just everybody be aware uh, as you're, you know, kind of uh, making your preparations and doing those things which you believe he's called you to do. Um, just be aware that there this narrative is being sort of drip fed 
into the psyche of the you know MK Ultra out there, uh, and you're not under that mind control, so you can watch it coming, going, what are they trying to do to these poor people? And so you can see it on its way. And this is important uh, that we keep in mind that a lot of things are just manipulation. Okay, so that's why it's important that we discuss these things so that you know we're not frantic, right? And that's an important thing. Uh, now we're seeing the increase in um, rhetoric with NATO against Russia. So we've already been watching this sort of ramp up. And of course, now Putin is saying he will deploy troops and strike systems near Finland's border. According to a report, Putin said Finland and Sweden's entry into NATO is a meaningless step, adding that Russia will deploy troops and systems of destruction on the Finnish border following its ascension to the alliance last April. And so there's going to be uh, more of a standoff going on there. And, of course, Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday vowed uh, to deploy its troops and strike systems near the Finnish border. And there are those that are reporting on the sort of back channels of the Internet that the real reason for this is because of the collapse of the organ harvesting and trafficking uh, systems which is rumored to be the real reason for a lot of this conflict. Uh, there are some that are trying to preserve their uh, centuries-old business of trafficking in that which is forbidden, and there are those forces working against that to destroy that capability. So we'll watch and see, because we don't know who's telling the truth until we see the evidence, but it certainly looks to me like they're the 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 bad guys are running out of places to hide. And this is the first time in Earth's history that their retreat positions are being exposed all at the same time. So this is really, really interesting. And so we're, we're going to keep watching this with interest because um, I don't believe that it is an imperial desire uh, that, that Russia is looking imperialistically. I just don't believe that. Now, that could be true. We, we could be wrong about it. But uh, personally, as I've reviewed these things, I just don't get that sense. Uh, when I read some of the reports that are sort of back channel, some of which may not be newsworthy, but still informational, uh, the sense I keep getting is uh, there's an underground war that is not being published. There's a conflict that is between dark and light, and light is winning. Uh, something that we've talked about uh, for several years. Uh, uh, we know that our adversary is destroyed according to the scripture, according to the, the prophecies. So this is what we go by, right? So this is the lens we're looking at this from the 10,000 foot view. And according to the scripture, our adversary is destroyed by the brightness of the king's coming. This brightness is light and increasing exposure, which correlates to another prophecy where he says, all those things that are hidden will be revealed. So I believe that's what's really going on, is there are those that are trying to keep their secrets, and there are forces that are uncovering those secrets, and that's really where the conflict is. Uh, speaking of something that it, it kind of lends in the same direction, this is an interesting story, because when TikTok first came out and became introduced to the United States, it was being introduced as a, you know, booty shaking, you know, sort of frivolous thing that, you know, was intended, I think, to just make the population even more frivolous, which in some regards, perhaps it's done that, right? But it's also been used to great effect for awakening because it's got short videos and so forth. So uh, China is now warning that uh, the proposed TikTok ban will come back to bite the U.S., which is an interesting thing to be coming out of China. Of course, you know, you could say that their, their vested interest is in TikTok, but I don't know. I get the feeling that um, this particular tool is ha has a, another use. Remember, what the enemy means for evil... Elohim will turn for good. Beijing warned on Wednesday that a proposed ban on Chinese-owned video sharing app TikTok would inevitably come back to bite the United States. The U.S. House of Representatives is set to vote later Wednesday, which it did vote and pass on a bill that would force the app to cut ties with its Chinese owner or get banned in the United States. So this was originally talked about under the uh, Trump administration. They didn't ban it. 
uh, I think they did something with regard to federal employees, but in terms of the country, it was allowed to run, you know, run rampant. Now, again, if it would have been just frivolous, I don't think it gets this kind of attention. I just don't. But because people are using it for awakening, right? Because it's a very powerful tool for that as well. And the time spent in sort of the frivolity wasn't as long as they thought. And it was, I think it's being, you know, overtaken by the saints. Um, but I also think it's being overtaken by informational uh, people that are, are um, uh, giving um, all kinds of different advice, wh whether it's sovereignty advice, legal advice, um, all kinds of things I've seen on TikTok that I really was surprised to see on TikTok. So this is interesting. And the legislation, according to them, would be yet uh, another threat to a video sharing app. And really what is concerning about this piece of legislation is it it looks a lot like the Patriot Act for digital. So it's almost like they're using TikTok as a cover story and they're trying to push it through to create um, more controls for information dissemination. Why would they want to do that in an election year, right? Why would they want to make sure they ramrod that through before the election comes in? Well, I think we all can figure out why that would be. And so um, this is going to be something that we watch with some interest. And again, I'm not defending it. I just find it interesting that they're now debating this and it's being pushed pretty hard. Uh, so I, I see this as a different level or a different kind of warfare. And some of it is informational. Again, uh, there's no love loss between certain groups. And and if they know each other's secrets, well, <laughs> those secrets are going to come out. And that is fulfillment of Bible prophecy, because he told us that that which was hidden would be revealed. So interesting that that is they're attempting to control that. They've been doing some things in Canada and in other places with an attempt to control information flow. Uh, I don't know how successful that'll be, but it certainly, it certainly looks to me like they're more concerned about information than they are about, you know, the booty booty stuff. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay. Because people aren't quite using it the way they thought they would, which I find fascinating. Uh, this is an interesting story. Footage reveals a Britain's dragon fire laser weapon. So we finally entered Star Wars here. I don't know if you guys saw this, but this was fascinating. I've got some other, you know, um, uh, war and, and conflict information to go over. But I just thought this was really interesting. This came out just after our last update. Footage reveals Britain's dragon fire. So why did they call it dragon fire? Again, they can't seem to get away from biblical statements. This is right out of the book of Revelation. Fire coming from the sky. We've already seen other evidences from other weaponry where we suspect fire coming from the sky. So maybe this is a bit of cover. I don't know. Dragon fire laser weapon that can destroy drones and hypersonic missiles instantly and less than basically 10 euros per shot, right? Or British pounds, I think that is actually. A super powerful laser weapon that can zap drones and super fast nuclear missiles has been shown to the public in recent release videos. Maybe this is why Great Britain is, you know, thinking it can take on Russia. Maybe they think they'll just shoot everything down with their lasers, right? So, okay. The powerful, the footage demonstrates the UK's first test firing of the Dragonfire laser weapon, where it effectively took down a drone in the sky using a powerful laser beam. And again, a drone is not a hypersonic missile moving at Mach 3. So, <laughs> you know, um, that's a little different target. And uh, but but hey, they got they got excited about it. So now it's out there that they got pew, 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 lasers. So everybody that was a Buck Rogers fan back in the day. Well, there you go. They finally came up with their <laughs> Buck Rogers <laughs> Star Wars lasers to shoot things out of the sky. And again, in the book of Revelation, we are seeing that there is fire that comes from the heavens. And so we've already seen some evidence to that effect. And I just think that's interesting uh, that we're watching this sort of be publicized in sort of a different way, more of a, um, you know, positive spin on it, defense oriented, um, you know, of course, against all the bad guys, wherever they may be. Right. So speaking of conflict, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but El Popo, you know, fish head, uh, well, he's telling everybody over in Ukraine that they should have the courage of the white flag in their negotiations, which is kind of interesting. This, of course, was not very popular among uh, uh, the Ukraine elites, but nevertheless, 
Pope Francis has said in an interview that Ukraine should wave, should have what he called the courage of the white flag and negotiate an end to the war with Russia that followed Moscow's full-scale invasion two years ago that has killed tens, tens of thousands. And uh, I do believe that, that the amount of information and, and things that have been already uncovered and their losses, the losses of strategic resources, uh, is making them really rethink this conflict. So Russia has um, really uh, executed quite an interesting game plan. They did not go to um, heavy, heavy-duty weaponry that many people thought they would. I think they tried to get a real bad war going, and it didn't quite go to the level they did uh, wanted it to. Uh, and I don't think they're going to give up on that effort, guys. So, you know, they're not just going to quit. They're trying to still stoke conflict. I think that's the reason for the whole laser show. And it's probably the reason why you got Francis Macron saying Europe must be ready if Russia escalates. OK, again, Russia is staying um, within its territories. Just the fact that it put troops even on a border, um, if that's provocative, then NATO is very provocative because where did they put all their bases? Right. So you can't use that logic and get away with it on, on the international stage. So there's a lot happening here. And French President Emmanuel Macron called President Vladimir Putin's Russia an adversary that would stop, not stop in Ukraine if it defeated Kiev's troops in the two-year-old conflict, urging Europeans to not be weak and get ready to respond. Okay. Well, they have responded, and they sent all kinds of um, farm equipment into town to spray manure on the government buildings. So Europeans aren't looking weak. Europeans are looking woke. And the good kind of woke, the good kind of awake, they're awakening to the shackles of the deletes, deletes. We call them the deletes now because they need to be deleted. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I see that they, they don't look cowardly to me when they're showing they're driving into town with their big old tractors and trucks and blocking things and going, mm -mm, no, we're not playing. They don't look cowardly to me. That looks pretty courageous. So I think there's um, there's plenty of courage in Europe, but I think that it's going in a different direction. I think the Europeans are realizing that they were sold a bill of goods and they're now realizing that, you know, these guys would send them into the buzzsaw if they if they let them. Yeah. Control alt delete. We're going to delete them. They're no longer elite. They're delete. And so speaking of delete. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you're having trouble reaching folks in Africa, then this would be why. Because you see, of course, and this was something they threatened to do. So it's kind of interesting. West and Central Africa see major Internet outage with undersea cables down. So this was actually a threat that um, I remember uh, was being lodged against Western forces and a major internet outage affected West and Central Africa on Thursday, the Internet Observatory Netblock said, as operators of multiple subsea cables reported failures. The cause of the cable failures is not immediately clear, but I bet it has something to do with military action, right? African subsea cable operator CECOM confirmed that services on its West African cable system were down and that customers who relied on that cable were redirected to the Google Equiano cable, which... CCOM uses. Okay, so they got a little bit of work around. That's the power of the internet. It's really difficult to take the entire internet down because it was built for um, worldwide conflict. So it has on a tremendous number of redundant systems. Uh, but nevertheless, that doesn't mean they're not still trying. So this is very interesting news for us to see that there's somebody's attempting, there's some forces somewhere looking to shut down communication. And I do believe part of the reason is because um, there are forces, there are uh, financial forces, right? So this is a multidimensional conflict. And there are those forces that are actually pulling quite a bit of sway in Africa against the West. So uh, there are those that believe that, you know, when they can't win a, a discussion, then they, they, they change tactics. And this, to me, smells like a tactic change. Um, you know, well, we can't we can't control that you guys are trying to go that way. So now we're just going to block you or <laughs> shut you down or something. And um, it'll fail. But nevertheless, it looks more like harassment than it does anything else. Uh, this is because I believe there's there's, uh, you know, 
the effect of these things that have come out, these these light bearing tools like a TikTok, like uh, you know, all the social medias. I don't think they planned on them going the direction they get. I didn't think they expected people to sit up on YouTube and do news broadcasts. I, I'm pretty sure they did not see that one coming the way that it ended up manifesting and and fully um, uh, coming out in the way that it did to the point where now their narrative building machines that they've spent billions of dollars building are no longer effective in turning public opinion. So that's kind of an interesting reality that they're now dealing with. But you guys are responsible for that because of your prayers. And uh, and so this this conflict is going to shift. The U.S. is going to hold meetings with dozens of allies to discuss military AI. What did we tell you guys about AI? AI, artificial intelligence, has been um, uh, something that they've been slow walking us into since way back. Uh, we're talking 90s. They were already talking about it. We had the movie The Matrix, for example, uh, that was letting us know that. So here we're seeing what we were concerned about, that AI would be implemented in military functions. And sure enough, the U.S. State Department is set to convene the first meeting of signatories to an artificial intelligence agreement this week. The meeting is set to focus on artificial intelligence and its military applications, which means kill people, right? Which is an issue of international interest, according to Fox News Digital. And so now we're going to see more uh, sort of open discussion about AI being utilized in a military function. And we've already, anybody that's watched iRobot knows that's not really a good idea, right? And that can be disastrous and very difficult to deal with because, of course, uh, you know, we could have um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Judgment Day, you know, and I'll be back when they got to fight the machines because they became sentient and took over and start shooting things. Right. What if the AI decides that, uh, you know, this or that is the enemy? That's it. You've got problems. Right. So that's that's where we're at, folks. That's what they're talking about now. Openly, it's in the news. It's not hidden. This isn't some back channel conspiracy. Now it's on the front pages. They're talking about. It. In fact, did you guys see this? This just confirms that we're we're going into a new era. Uh, mysterious drones were buzzing Langley for weeks. This is not just like a couple of days. Weeks. Unidentified drones were such an issue that assets were called in from around the government, including a NASA, NASA W-57 high-altitude jet. Okay, uh, Langley Air Force Base located one of the most strategic areas of the country across the Chesapeake Bay from the sprawling naval station Norfolk and open Atlantic was the epicenter of waves of mysterious drone incursions. So again, um, if these drones are controlled by humans, well you know, then they're going to have certain capabilities. But if they're controlled by AI, well, then they're dealing with another thing. Is this the reason why they're suddenly having a meeting? Is this the real reason why they're having a meeting to discuss AI and military applications, maybe to reverse engineer whatever's going loose here? Okay, so uh, this is kind of interesting and not um, pleasant. I mean, that's kind of a bit scary to really think about, you know, uh, these things going on. At the same time, uh, those of you here in the United States, you have the FBI director. I don't know if you guys saw this, but again, this is our job here. FBI director warns of dangerous individuals coming across the southern border. Yeah, think we got more people coming across the border than live in most of the states in the United States since the, since the Biden administration began. So, of course, there's going to be some dangerous folks in there. I mean, what were they thinking? Right. So here we go. Amid a bitter election year debate over illegal immigration, FBI Director Chris Ray told the Senate panel on Monday that dangerous individuals have entered the United States illegal at the southern border. We have had dangerous individuals entering the United States, have a variety of sources. And Ray said at the annual Worldwide Threats Cong Congressional hearings in which the heads of U.S. intelligence agencies testify. Well, we could have told them that. I mean, I, I think anyone watching this broadcast could have told them, duh, you, you think? You kicked the door open and told them to come in and get a debit card for crying out loud. So I'm um, not really sure what the logic here is. It's almost like they're trying to say mea culpa, but at the same time, not changing the policy. So 
I mean, it just, it's almost laughable, but, you know, it's really serious because of the damage, people that are getting hurt, uh, people that are getting robbed, um, you know, whatever other uh, things are happening, damage to property, which seems to be going under the radar and underreported. And I do believe that we're seeing a lot more um, crime and issues than they would like to let on. And this is shifting the world opinion. And this is something that I want to spend a few minutes on tonight because I do believe that this is a big shift going on. Um, we, we had a, a change in the, um, uh, the U.S. banking system that went into effect on March 11th, uh, so a week ago, with regard to lending on certain assets. So the liquidity of the banks is going to be dramatically impacted at the same time that they're in conflict with third world countries, which are starting to rise in strength as they unite um, under a different banner. And Yemen is ties with Russia and China is on the rise, which signals a U.S. defeat. A member of Answar Allah's political bureau speaks on involving relations with BRICS. And we've talked about this. We're going to talk about this tonight a little bit more. Uh, in recent weeks. So they're building momentum. And the more things that happen, the more momentum they build. And there's continuous building and development and relations between Yemen, Russia, China, and the BRICS countries exchanging experiences and expertise in various fields. Does this maybe be, is this why they're, you know, they're getting together to discuss AI on the battlefield? They're losing, folks. Um, as a matter of fact, this story really tells the story. Uh, of the shift of public opinion and the shift of what is going to be successful going forward. China has never canceled this many shipments of U.S. wheat. So China's record of U.S. wheat cancellations, over a half a million tons, have been announced since last week. They're not buying. They're saying, nah, you know what, never mind, guys. China canceled another batch of U.S. wheat export shipments adding to an already record number of cancellations that have weighed in weighed on Chicago futures. Okay, so those that are speculating on wheat futures are getting hammered. U.S. Department of Agriculture on Monday, in a Monday statement, said private exporters exited purchases of 264,000 metric tons of U.S. soft red winter wheat to China. It was the third straight session with such an announcement, bringing the cancellation total to 504,000 tons. What do they know that we don't know? What do they know about that wheat that they don't want it, that they don't want to buy it? What's that telling you? And where is it going to go? Okay, because this is what you won't hear. Um, there's a reason why they're canceling their orders for wheat, perhaps because the end of the Ukraine war is, is upon them and they'll be, they'll be able to supply from a different location. But also because, folks, there are things that are for sale in the United States that nobody, that other countries won't even touch. Uh, in fact, they have to have completely different formulas for European countries than you have here in the United States. The food is very different here. When we were in Israel, we experienced that firsthand. So this is a story worth watching, and it's going to affect the economy in a different way. And I do believe that this is going to dramatically affect the farming sector because if they can't sell their wheat, then why'd they grow it, right? So this is going to be huge. And at the same time, coincidentally, big coincidence here, folks, BRICS is providing an update on its new currency. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so what did I tell you guys? This is a multidimensional conflict, and this is the real war. This is the war they don't really want you to be completely aware of until it hits you. BRICS is looking at a, creating a new currency in the global markets to settle international trade among member countries, which that number is growing exponentially. The alliance wants to end dependence on the U.S. dollar and give prominence to the soon-to-be-released currency. And the block of nine countries wants their native currencies to strengthen as keeping the U.S. dollar in reserve poses a risk to their growth. So now they're looking at the U.S. Federal Reserve note as a paperweight as something that is going to hurt them going forward. This is not good for those countries that are on the other side of that, right? So this is where we have to be uh, awake. And in fact, BRIC nations have launched a blockchain currency. A new economic era, according to them, has emerged. And BRIC nations form a new path for economic autonomy. 
And this is something that is going to grow. There's somewhere upwards in certain sectors, guys. A good question that was just asked. There are certain sectors where the BRICS nations represent 80% of trade, and they just threaten to boycott in the other direction. Yeah, the, the shoes on the other foot. In recent movements that could reverberate through the very fabric of global economic order, the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, along with new additions, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the United Arab Emirates, along with the others that you're about to see, um, uh, these are the ones that have already signed up and completed. There are others that are still applying, including, I think, something like 27 United States. 27 states already have applied for BRICS, are steadily paving the way towards de-dollarization and reshaping financial dynamics in a worldwide scale. So this is not going away, folks. This is their counter move to the, the hegemony of the Federal Reserve note or the central bank power. Uh, again, we don't pick sides in these things, but it is fascinating because remember what the scripture says in the book of Revelation, that there will come a point where just buying a, you know, a, it'll take a, a day's wages just to buy a loaf of bread. Uh, so it is, it's, and we're getting there. I mean, there's some of you are starting to see that. In fact, they're hiding famine by, by filling stores with that, which isn't food, um, that which is bioengineered or invented or chemical trickery. Um, and giving you the illusion that you have plenty of food in the store, when in reality, I think they're covering up for famine until finally they can pull the plug. Uh, and now Russia is taking a stronger position uh, in leadership in the alliance, and more and more countries want to join. So look what's going on. The movement is in this direction, and everyone can see it. Uh, it's not. It's it's pretty difficult to hide. Many countries are vying for admission to the BRICS economic group, backed by China and Russia. South Africa Foreign Minister Nadeli Pandor said on Wednesday, it comes shortly after the ban expanded its lineup for the first time more than a decade. And Pandora revealed that 34 countries have expressed their interest in joining the bloc of the largest developing econo economies. Um, and they don't want to completely tip the hand because they don't want there to be pressure put on these countries not to. Uh, and so they're giving them their free, their privacy. Uh, and uh, and I do believe that this is countering an already existing global currency system because the U.S. dollar was already the global currency used in every country uh, and was the default currency for many years, for decades. So the the global system isn't something that was coming. The global system, something you just you're coming out of. It's it's falling apart uh, around us. And and I, I think it's interesting. Some people think it's still in the future, which a lot of folks do that. They tend to push things continuously forward. Um, but I don't think I don't believe that this is that. I believe that we're coming out of what was already a global government. So a lot of people are thinking, oh, there's a global government company. No, they're, they're, they're deleting the global government. That was the invisible hand controlling these pretend political systems. And BRICS continues development of its currency and payment system, which is um, competing with the central bank system. So this is really interesting as you watch it unfold. Could it be used for evil? Of course, all of it could. But we're going to watch it with interest, aren't we? Alongside the alliance's de-dollarization commitment, BRICS is continuing the development of its own currency and payment system. Indeed, Brazil's emissary in the G20, Mauricio Lirio, told Russia state-owned news agency TASS of the collective ongoing commitment to its own payment infrastructure. These are words you use when you have had enough of a bully, of a system that was controlling you. These are words of freedom. So this is interesting to watch. Now, could it, again, be used for wickedness? Of course, um, you know, any of these can be. The nature of mammon is that it doesn't require love to exercise it. This is why the love of mammon is the root of all evil and why we have to be uh, extricated from it through um, biblical means. But nevertheless, the, the fact is, is that this rhetoric that you're hearing, the, the conversation that you're hearing, is anti-central bank or anti-global power, even though they're going to become, in a sense, a global power as well. But it's interesting that they're retaining the individual nation's currency power. So they're not trying to propose that everybody just drop their individual currencies in their countries. 
they're they're saying we will trade or exchange with your national so this actually strengthens the individual currencies as opposed to saying no everybody use this one currency you know with presidents on it okay so we're coming out of that guys and this it's an interesting thing and i know that you know some might have different thoughts on that and put your comments on the video we'd love to hear your thoughts but uh, i do believe that what we're seeing i mean if i may uh, I think we're seeing a destruction. We're seeing the brick hitting the statue and it falling apart, right? So we should see the whore judge soon. And we should see uh, that weeping that's discussed in Revelation 18, where the merchants, you know, are are in dismay, right? So is this what we're being prepped for? Are these guys ahead of it going, they're going to fall? They're going to fall hard? We don't want to be there when it falls, okay? So interesting thing to look at and see where we really are. And this is a huge, huge development in that regard. Saudi Arabia, and they they have been a longtime staunch ally of the United States. Uh, that partnership with them, that oil for dollars partnership, was basically the petrodollar backbone and for them to be attending an alliance meeting in 2024 for BRICS is not a good sign for the central bank uh, people. OK, so Saudi Arabia is currently considering joining the BRICS coalition, carefully weighing the benefits. So it's waiting strategically, but I think they're already deciding to go this way. They're just trying to do it diplomatically. Um and although it's not formally joined the bloc, Saudi Arabia has shown an active interest in part by participating in various BRICS events in 2024. In particular, the kingdom sent delegates to participate in two separate Sherpa meetings held in Russia earlier this year. So the, the indicators are that they're going to be picking up. This is a massive resource rich nation, uh, not only in terms of its own monetary wealth, but also its resource wealth. And so this is a huge, huge development um, that is starting to come uh, into play. And interestingly, it is coming to play in the midst of an election year here in the West where their response capability is limited because any over response could tip the scale. So it's an interesting year for them to be taking advantage of in some of these developments. In fact, speaking of an election year, uh, we're back to AI again, guys, because now they're telling us to brace ourselves for deep fake election. No matter what happens with gener generative AI, its disruptive forces are already beginning to play a role in the fast approaching U.S. presidential election. And artificial intelligence was once something the average person described in the abstract. They had no tactile relationship with it, and were uh, e even if they were aware of it even if their devices were often utilizing it. That's all changed. And so now you've got various forces that are using um, uh, AI and, and uh, deep fake technologies and all kinds of stuff, uh, <laughs> which if you use it for fun, it's no big deal, right? But when you start using it for nefarious purposes, like making phone calls, impersonating people, um, getting out the vote, get out the vote using some popular person's voice when it really isn't that person. I mean, lots of things can now be available to them that weren't available before. And of course, you know, the, who is the one of the biggest players in this? Well, that would be Google and, and YouTube, right? And so are they a good company? Does anybody have any questions about um, the, these, the, the, the intentions of these folks? Um, and guess what just came out? This was interesting. This was just today. Watch this, guys. Google has interfered. Oh, my goodness. This just came out in the news. Light. Hello. Can somebody say light? Google has interfered with elections 41 times over the last 16 years, Media Research Center says. No organization has more control over information than Google, Brent Bozel told Fox News Digital. Google has interfered with major elections in the United States 41 times over the last 16 years, according to a new study from the Media Research Center. 
MRC researchers have found 41 times where Google interfered in elections over the last 16 years, and its impact has surged dramatically, making it ever more harmful to democracy. Okay, so uh, that's interesting that that's coming out. We just continue to ask for more light in this area, and those that you know took Google money, and uh, they're going to have to get up and repent if they're in the ministry because uh, that is Judas money that they picked up. Okay. And they're, they're using this information for control, for manipulation. Uh, this is why we don't sell traffic to Google. We won't sell. They can offer us a million dollars tomorrow. And we wouldn't care. <laughs> That's true about a lot of people, actually. So we would just keep right on going and hand them back their check and say thanks anyway. Uh, we're not in it for that. And so those that sold out are now regretting it. And uh, pray for them because they're going to have to come out in public and repent or they're going to face massive judgment upon arrival of the king. And so th we're seeing the effects of this BRICS movement, and it's starting to affect prices in a shocking way. And a lot of things that are happening, um, the Fed rates are, they're, they were going to uh, cut rates in March, but that looks unlikely now because inflation trends upward in February by a pretty good number. So those of you that have been noticing prices increasing in the store, you're not crazy. They're finally admitting some of this stuff, okay? Inflation rises to 3.2%, jeopardizing the chances for interest rate to fall in 2024. Uh, inflation rose 0.04 in February and 3.2% year over year. The Federal Reserve is unlikely to lower interest rates anytime soon as inflation remains above the Fed's 2% target. And that is, who believes this number? I don't, Okay. You, unless you add a zero here and make it 30.2%, uh, it is it is a lot higher than 3.2%, okay? And uh, and some of that is based on large ticket things and so forth, so they're able to move the market that way. But you've never seen some of these big guys selling their stock, um, selling their personal assets. <laughs> You're talking about billionaires that are liquidating right now. Uh, I think they can see the writing on the wall. So, you know, be wise for everybody to be prayerful about their assets and what they are, you know, how things are going to start to unfold. Moving along, um, this conflict, again, is multidimensional. Uh, Chile is now doing something. Remember, we talked about South Africa was prosecuting um, Israel and the Israelis. Again, we don't take positions in these conflicts. We believe anybody harming children on either side of any conflict is, is needs to be prosecuted. And we certainly don't believe anything improves because you bomb it. Um, and this next picture is going to be a little bit harsh. So uh, viewer discretion is advised. 650 Chilean lawyers sue Israel at the ICC for Gaza genocide. Uh, so this is really getting rough. I'm going to take that off the screen. Um, it's really not a pretty sight. Some 650 Chilean law lawyers have filed a legal complaint at the ICC against Israel's leader, Benjamin Netanyahu. So the knives appear to be out for Benny Boy. Okay, it's not looking good for him uh, for committing genocide in the besieged Gaza Strip. And, oh, you know, um, this this does not bode well. This invites in uh, third parties to come and get themselves involved in this conflict, which could be really bad for the nation state of Israel. So uh, interesting development there as Chilean lawyers are adding to the South African effort to prosecute the individual not the nation. So this is an interesting, remember we talked about this last week, this change of tactic. And I think it's having a very powerful effect. I think those that are realizing that they could fall under the same scrutiny are now trying to turn the lights off. Okay. So top Democrat Schumer calls for new elections in Israel saying Netanyahu is an obstacle to peace. What? 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 This you just didn't used to see stuff like this. OK, Senate Majority Leader uh, Chuck Schumer on Thursday called in Israel to hold new elections, saying he believes Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has lost his way and is an obstacle to peace in the region and amid a growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Now, remember, a lot of people felt that this conflict was coincidental to take attention away from his prosecution, uh, the prime minister's prosecution. So. For them to be 
you know, publicly, whether it's theatrical or not, it's still an interesting signaling that there's a shift about to occur. So I believe that what's happening is, again, as we talked about last week, there's a lot of light that is shining and it's not coming back positive for them. So they're losing more than just the support of their own people. They're starting to feel it economically. And remember, Israel is in a 20% depression economically. So things are not good for Israel. Now, last week we talked about uh, Haiti moving quickly here, folks, uh, and uh, we saw that there was a serious, serious uh, problem going on there as uh, the guy they called the barbecue uh, man, who and they actually are cannibals in Haiti, so there are people being consumed. Um, but now there is a pushback effort, and look where it's coming from. Now, I did hear about some Marines, and I heard about certain some military uh, help that went in, but look where it really boils down to, and this is a lesson to everybody, machete-wielding militias. This is people of the nation themselves. This is people um, rising up against uh, this um, uh, new tyrannical power that, you know, these gangs. Uh, and the militias are uh, citizens who are battling gangs in Port-au-Prince as Haiti's elites vie for power. Uh, so again, we have deletes there we have to get rid of, but uh, the people are standing up. The right road that passes in front of Haiti's Toussaint Le Vitoire International Airport has a post-apocalyptic stillness these days where cars and crowds of people were once massed. Only tendrils of smoke rise from the smoldering piles of trash, sending a bitter taste in the air. An armed police vehicle hulks nearby, and police, a few police officers on watch cover their faces uh, because, of course, the street looks like it's nearly abandoned. And uh, they've had tremendous warfare uh, since the start of the month. Criminal groups have been attacking with unprecedented coordination and the last remembrance of the Haitian state. And so if you remember that um, uh, one of the things that we reported on was that Oh, way back when the president of Haiti uh, would not was not going along with the with the program, you know, the big program, and they got rid of him, and I think they, they installed some of their own puppets. So this is what I think turned this originally created this crisis, but now of course they've overreacted, and now the the citizenry is rising up, and this is an important lesson because. It can very easily happen in any place. Uh, we're seeing shocking things happening. And if you think it's only going to happen, you know, somewhere else, well, I got news for you. This happened in Missouri. A teen in a shocking high school beatdown pictured fighting hard to stay alive after the attack. She's literally fighting for her life. Um, this poor teen was attacked in the street. And uh, I won't show you the video, but it is available on um, Remnant Watch, and you can find the link. Uh, the victim was viciously attacked and viciously, brutally uh, attacked. And so this is demonic. It's very wicked. And it's something that can happen anywhere. This is Missouri. This is flyover country. This is the show me state. This is not supposed to happen. And here it is. It's manifesting. And so, folks, don't be don't be sleeping out there because, again, um, you're seeing more demonic activity going on. Uh, left and right. And and uh, we talked about these planes. Boeing was having difficulty. Uh, Boeing is a big, big U.S. company that can really move the GDP, uh, depending upon sale of planes. And we talked about how China, uh, if you guys go back, uh, um, I think it was last week or the week before, we talked about China's new venture into the airplane business, the actual planes themselves. Uh, to compete with Boeing at the time, at the same time that Boeing is having some serious quality issues where they've got hatch doors popping open to mid flight. Uh, we saw another report of a, a motor falling off or an engine falling off and they had to, uh, you know, emergency land. So we've seen, you know, probably 10 stories in just the last month that involved Boeing in some way. And then there was this whistleblower uh, that came out and, he immediately was found dead. Uh, so this Boeing whistleblower came out. Uh, it was an employee known for raising concerns about the firm's production standards. He's been found dead in the U.S. John Burnett worked for Boeing for more than 30 years before retiring in 2017. In the days before his death, he had been giving evidence 
in a whistleblower lawsuit against the company. And he was removed. So again, this is this is a serious conflict going on, multidimensional. And I do believe that um, you know, Boeing is one of those big companies that, you know, they, they kind of like those too big to fail kind of things. Well, Boeing might be one of those they consider too big to fail. Anybody that went up against them, well, they, you know, it looks awful suspicious, doesn't it, that this guy was a whistleblower and then suddenly he's dead, you know? So it's dangerous out there and these conflicts are real. Um, and in war, people lose their lives. And so this is the reality. Uh, and at the same time, so almost as if they're going to test to see how this is going to affect the, the population. I couldn't believe this, this story when I saw it. I, I literally could not believe it. I went right on social media and said, folks, this is not good. This I just heard this, and it's not good. And I heard that the Pittsburgh police will only respond to calls of in-progress emergencies as part of a new staffing plan. And in fact, they were closing one precinct from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. saying anything that happened in that time period, they weren't even going to respond. They're not even sending out a unit. That's some scary stuff to tell the public, right? Chief Larry Serrato aims to reduce the Bureau's call volume from 200,000 calls to 50,000 calls. Wait, wait a minute. So you're just going to reduce the calls? Not crime, just the calls. We're just going to manage the phone calls better. Uh, the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police has implemented a new response policy beginning March 11th. Officers will only respond to calls of in-progress emergencies. So you, if you don't call while the crime is in the middle of being committed, well, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't respond to, oh, did that happen 10 minutes ago? Oh, it's not in progress right now. Ooh, oh, ooh, too, oh, too bad, too, oh, not good, right? That's scary stuff, folks, and it's scary to tell that to, to bad guys in a time when lawlessness is rising. So if you remove the police, we all know what's going to happen. That does not take rocket science. So they're they're testing the waters here, and they're watching. I think they're watching to see what kind of response they get. Well, they had a huge viral response, so they might back off from it because of the number of people that went, what? What are you thinking? Um, but nevertheless, it is interesting that they proposed this, right? So uh, and part of what they're also doing is seeding the narrative that their systems are vulnerable to hackers and so forth. So this also can be used if needed as a secondary reason why they may not be responding to crime. And in the French state, again, this is in France, but it could happen anywhere. The French state services are hit by cyber attacks of unprecedented intensity. Well, at least they didn't blame it on a solar flare. Cyber attacks of unprecedented intensity have targeted several French government institutions just months before the Paris Olympics, but have been contained, the prime minister's office said on Monday. Because that's what prime ministers do. They tell you the problem's already solved, even though I'm pretty sure they've got serious issues with hacking and so forth. Uh, so, you know, you've got those elements that are now biting at the edges of society at the same time that you have these conflicts going on. Uh, this does not bode well. Then add to that, uh, again, Bible prophecy talks about earthquakes in diverse places, right? Well, this story just came out. This was just, wow. Uh, again, it's a lot of information. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but this is a big one that confirms some things that Messiah told us. A sleeping subduction zone, let me put this on the screen, uh, could awaken a, a, and form a new ring of fire that swallows the Atlantic Ocean. What? Yeah, they're actually saying this. And it's interesting because in Africa, there have been several cracks that they couldn't really explain manifesting on, on, on the continent of Africa. A modeling study suggests a slumbering subduction zone below the Gilbracha Strait is active and could break into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and of course, they're saying in 20 years, 20 million years time. OK, but whenever they see the narrative with information. They're doing so with intention. They're doing it to put the idea into the mind of the people. So when they talk about things like, um, oh, I don't know, like a volcano in Iceland that is spouting for the fourth time in three months, 
sending plumes of lava skyward, making you think about Frodo Baggins, right? Well, there's a reason why they're constantly pumping this information out there. Not that it's not happening because it is, but the point is, is that it's also feeding into a narrative. And I do believe that there are efforts some are trying to make to bring so much chaos into the world so that they can pull off what they would believe to be, you know, sort of the phoenix rising from the ashes. A volcano in Iceland erupted Saturday evening for the fourth time in three months, sending orange jets of lava into the night sky. Okay. So, um, and again, this is, I think a lot of it is meant to create uh, fear, create anxiety, and send people sort of in a panic mode. This is not wise. Instead, you need to be prayerful. You need to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. If Elohim is putting in your heart that you need to get moving, then you need to get moving. I don't know how this story got past us uh, last month. Uh, this was actually uh, a little bit back there, but I went back and grabbed it because I don't remember us talking about this. So I'm going to finish off our broadcast tonight with this little gem. And, you know, there is a lot of effort in biometrics and they're, they always like to make you think things are in the future when they're actually in the present. So there's a lot of manipulation of thought. Uh, after all, those that have been injected now have a MAC address. So they are numbered and trackable. I've watched people go into, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, cemeteries and you know over dead bodies like fresh graves and they're still emitting a mac address what yeah yeah so even though they've been buried they're already dead they're still emitting a mac address which is crazy when you think about that uh so this technology that they're talking about here is not a future thing it is something that actually already exists today and they're slow walking it into your psyche but it is already a done deal for two thirds of the people, okay, at least in the United States, in some countries, even more. Payments grant giant Visa showcased its pay by palm biometric payment technology at an event marked the transform transformation of its Singapore Innovation Center last week. During the event, visitors were in invited to use the palm reader and link their signature to their payment card for a transaction. Does anybody here go, oh, creep factor? That's an awful lot. That's that's way too close to the physical manifestation of the mark of the beast, right? So, again, an interesting story. I didn't know how this one got by us, but it did. And so we just thought we'd go back and grab that, bring it forward, because that's interesting and a bit crazy when you think about the implications. And so freedom is definitely being um, attacked. Uh, there's a number of things that are, you know, very, very concerning. And uh, I'm going to throw this last story in. I got a little bit of time, just a few seconds left. And I did find this fascinating. Again, you'll find this on remnantwatch.com. A 10 foot tall people. Uh, so this is slowly making its way out too. They're, this is something they've been trying to hide for who knows how long, quite a, bit, quite a bit of time. They've been hiding information about giants and so forth. I mean, I don't know why, but there was somebody made a decision back there that we're going to hide all this. Well, they're having a hard time. Ten foot tall people discovered by archaeologists in Nevada cave. So this just came out. Mythology, folklore, and even the Bible tell us that giants once roamed the earth. And it turns out there's evidence to back this claim. This is probably why they don't want it uh, out there, because it confirms the scripture. Extraordinary human remains have been found in the U.S. state of Nevada with some of the skeletons measuring up to 10 feet tall. Woo! Okay, proves the Bible to be true. Okay, alongside their jaw-dropping size, the bodies, some of which were said to have been mummified, were found to have red hair, which also confirms some things that we saw in the scripture. This has fueled the theory passed down through the ages that a long-forgotten race of humans once dominated the Southwest in America. According to the Peyote, a tribe that settled in the Nevada region thousands of years ago, cannibalistic red-haired giants called the Setika came to the Americas from a distant land, probably the island of Mu <laughs> that no longer exists in the um, 
Pacific Ocean. But if you go over to my lunch break, you will find out about the island of Mu. Legend has it that the Seiti Ka crossed the ocean on rafts made of the trees and soon came, made a name for themselves as being taller, stronger, and crueler than ordinary men. And so we now have physical evidence of the giants, of the Nephilim, um, and maybe this explains other things that people are still struggling to find explanations for. And so, folks, th this is getting interesting as information is getting out that they cannot control and they can't quite put a tamp down on it. It's almost like they have to pick which holes of the dam they want to hold the water back on. It looks like it's coming from everywhere. I also saw a report of those that are now pressing harder to get into the Vatican vaults and expose the things that are hidden there. Uh, there are some who suspect that the technology that we have today is not its first appearance on Earth and in Earth's history, which would make a lot of sense. And especially given some of the cave paintings and the drawings and so forth that we've already seen uh, that are thousands or at least hundreds of years old. And so it certainly begs the question, are we seeing a repeat of previous times when Elohim has already done his destructive power or uh, on some of these things? And are we about to see it again? OK, so that's certainly something for us to consider and uh, something for us to be aware of. But regardless of what your thoughts are on that, in the natural, we are seeing more and more movement that is curtailing your rights, curtailing your freedom and restricting your information flow so that you make the decisions they want you to make instead of the well-informed decisions that I believe children of light should be making. And so. Let me encourage you all to share, continue to share resources, encourage one another, bless one another, support one another, pray for one another, and most importantly, stand together in one accord in this hour. After all, it's your unity that will push back against evil in this hour. I can tell you right now, everybody in Haiti is figuring that out really quickly. Well, that's our report for tonight. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I know many of you, uh, this is the only broadcast you'll even watch. So uh, we're certainly grateful for that. And we certainly hope that um, we can be an encouragement to you. And for those that are watching Bible prophecy and wanting to make sure that they're not missing anything, our effort here, that 10,000 foot view, is to see what things are coming in line with what was foretold. Well, thank you, thank you again for joining us. We pray Elohim blesses each and every one of you. Good night.